we are going to dive in those two state of minds that we have, the creative thinking and the analytical thinking. And we will really put them in comparison and start to understand those. And from there on also learn some action steps which help you to put you in those specific state of minds. Because that always depends on the situation which state of mind is more beneficial. If a tiger is standing in front of you, I don't think it's the best way to be very creative and come up with very outlandish ideas. No, you gotta be laser focused right there. If you think analytically, you're very much focused, you're laser focused and you have this convergent thinking. So you really just select the most promising options and this is highly, highly rational and it's also rule-based, based on the rules you're really trying to figure out, okay, what is the next step? On the other side, creative thinking is very open-minded and has this divergent thinking. So coming up with more options, generating and creating more variation. And the analytical thinking is highly dependent on your conscious thinking, on your prefrontal cortex. This is where all this rationality happens. And you really just need this area of your brain to really think analytically. Thinking creatively, of course, also highly depends on your consciousness, but also your subconsciousness. Here it is more about the overall connectivity within your brain. You might heard about the incubation phase when you really let go and relax and suddenly the idea comes up. And those are moments where this overall connectivity was highly productive and your subconscious brain parts really played a crucial role here. If you are very serious in this particular moment, it is very good for thinking analytically. But if you're very happy or relaxed, this is very good for thinking creatively. And as you can already tell, all those points I'm telling you here, they are all kind of interconnected. In fact, studies have shown that when your boss is displaying a happy mood, you're better at thinking creatively. But if your boss is more serious or sad, this is better for thinking analytically. And if you think about it, it also makes sense because if you're in a happy mood, you have more of those emotional resources and creativity always has been highly risky because you come up with new things that might work, but also might not work. So being happy and relaxed really helps you to get into this mood and be okay also with some failure. In general, analytical thinking is very rule-based, rigid, and you have the control. OCD people, they tend to be highly analytical and you don't need to have an official OCD diagnosis, but a lot of people tend to be very rigid and controlled. They tend to be very orderly and very neat, punctual, systematic and controlled, and they are excellent bookkeepers. But if you're very rigid and tight and you always try to control your emotions, you can't play, you can't let go. You have those emotional blockages and you're rather cold. Have you ever met those kind of people? You feel like, wait, you're kind of trying to suppress something. You really can't play, you can't let go. They are threatened by new things. But if they can always assimilate those new things into old categories, then nothing can happen to them. Because they are in general afraid of emotions and deepest instincts and they are repressing those. Otherwise, if they would not repress them, they would feel like going crazy because they don't have control. They are afraid to lose up too much. That's a great danger for them. And that's the nature of creativity. This is always about thinking outside of the box, thinking childlike. You can live with your unconsciousness, be childish, have these fantasies and imaginations. Be okay with your femininity and your crazy qualities. Don't have this need of obsessively control yourself, but you actually can regress to your childlike thinking and be very open and also open to crazy new ideas and really kind of let go of your control, but really let your mind wandering wherever it wants to wander. Of course, there are some people who are better in thinking analytically and some people better in thinking creatively. But you can still, of course, switch your moods. And this is also advisable because throughout the days, I guess that there are some situations it is more advisable to be creative and in others, you just gotta be a little bit more analytic 
If you do your finances, I guess you don't want to be in a creative mood, but more in an analytical mood. And lastly, if you are fearful, you are very risk aversive and this controlled convergent rule based thinking, this is highly risk aversive. But if you want to be creative, that's risky coming up with new ideas, mind wandering. This is not a goal directed behavior. And it's very important that you don't have this fear. So this is again connected to this happy and relaxed mood, being okay with not always being that goal directed and come up with ideas that might not work. Elaborate problems without the need for finding solutions. That is also creativity. Okay, I hope those two states of minds became a little bit more clear. Some might ask now, wait, there's this quote of necessity is the mother of invention. And this really sounds like pressure. How can you be inventive and creative if you are under pressure? All those creative symptoms we talked about here, happiness, subconsciousness, being open-minded, think outside of the box and think childlike. This doesn't really sound like pressure and necessity. This is not really working together because then other people say the strength is to be found in serenity. And this very much sounds like what we just discussed here. The question is now, how do those quotes fit together? And in fact, analytical thinking might be very helpful throughout the creative process. In the beginning, we talked about divergent thinking and convergent thinking. And this is basically what evolution is always doing. They are always coming up with some divergent ideas. So creating a lot of selection. And then there's this convergent thinking by selecting on the best ideas. So survival of the fittest then. And this is how creativity also works. You really come up with a lot of ideas, be very creative, but then you also got to figure out what kind of ideas are very useful and with what ideas I don't want to work with anymore. And this is more the convergent thinking. So analytical thinking might work here as well. And sometimes it might be enough to be highly analytical and really pick those ideas that are just around you and already help you to create something novel. Now, how do you put yourself into a creative mood? We already talked about your happiness level, that when you're in a good mood, you're more creative. Also wide spaces in contrast to, for example, low ceilings make you very creative. The color blue and green, also evolution wise, it makes sense. Blue is very much connected with white atmospheres, the ocean, the sky. It's really making you more creative. Music in general, especially music that is slightly slower than your heartbeat, it relaxes you again and it makes you more creative. And walking, for example, so doing something, not 100% 100 focus on this one thing, but really do something while being creative. The Greek philosophers, they love to go for a walk while discussing all about their philosophy. Those are points that can make you more creative. And here it is just very important to get to know yourself. When are you more relaxed and creative? In the morning, in the evening? What puts you in the right mood? In contrast, if you want to be focused and analytic, you've got to have a distraction-free environment and don't start to mind wandering. Usually music is not advisable, of course, depending on the individual. And getting just in general in this right mood, don't be high on emotions. You're not going to be very analytically thinking. In general, just really get to know yourself again. When are you more analytic? When more creative? And how can you put yourself into this mood and get to know yourself? I think that's the best way to really start managing oneself the best. Now, if you want to know more about creativity, check out this YouTube channel. We got some more videos about creativity talking about from different angles because that's just a topic that is huge and you really got to perceive that from different angles and there's a lot to discuss. So get to know that, maybe read a book, also listen to other people, what are they talking about? Creativity and analytical thinking depending why you're watching this video and I wish you good luck. I wish you a lot of insights that you can take and actually develop yourself and I will see you in the next video.